YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Should you buy Palantir over $22? So thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. So I've been seeing articles just pop up, you know, with conflictions about, you know, should investors buy? Should they sell? What should they do with their Palantir? Now, for those of you that do know, um, know that I am a long term holder or with for with Palantir. So I'm in this thing for the long haul, just like most of the stocks that I talked about on this channel. Now, here is my answer to that question. I would I would say this. If you are long term like I am, I would keep dollar cost averaging. That's what I'm doing. Not telling you guys what to do, not telling you what you necessarily should do, because I can't give you guys financial advice. But dollar cost averaging, no matter what price it is, have a, a automatic uh, DCA system that you have where you're putting $5 a day, $10 a day, $50 a day, whatever you have set, let, and just let it let it run. Put it in, in a, a brokerage that you're not going to look at and just let it continue to run. That way, you're not necessarily concerned with if it's going up in the short term, if it's coming down, because we know that Palantir has been trading between about $20 and 78 cent all the way up to about $24 uh, over the last several weeks, right? So from that perspective, if I'm long term, I dollar cost average. If I'm a person that's looking to swing trade, I would be looking at certain levels. Like I just mentioned, $20 and about 78 cent has been a strong level of support. And I'll bring that up on the chart. I was just looking at it. So about $20 and 77 cent, 78 cent has been a strong level of support. You can see every time we've come back here, we pop up, we come down, we pop up, we come down, we pop up. So if I was swing trading, I would look for an entry report near or around $20.77. And then I would have a stop loss at about $20 and about 40 cent. Okay. That's where I would have a stop loss if I was going to be swing trading this thing. Because if we come under $20.40, we don't know where this thing can land, right? We don't know if it's going to stop here at about $18. We don't know if it's going to stop at, at $19. We don't know where it's going to stop because virtually in recent times, there's no history in between $20 and about $0.77 cent all the way down to about $17 or so. So from that perspective, that's why if I was swing trading this thing, I would have a stop loss at about 240 because if we break uh, well below that strong level of support we have, we don't know what's going to happen. So I would take a minimum loss there and not be too risky, like having a stop loss at 19 or $18 because there's two things that can happen, right? If I'm... If I'm buying the stock outright and I decide I want to swing trade in the aftermarkets and pre-markets, I could get out. If I get into options, that can be problematic because you could lose out on a lot of money with a, a quick move, even if you're going, you know, a little bit out with the expiration date, you could potentially lose money because the the option may not recover depending on a type of option you have. Now, if I were to get in any options to protect myself, I would do leap year options, right? So that means that I want to go about a year or more out. That way, if it goes down drastically, I've got time to, you know, recover on, on some of the losses that I may occur during the fall for Palantir. Now, it's right now we just have a lot of conflicting things going on, right? So a lot of you have noticed that every time that there's a, a good deal announced, the stock will initially pop and then it'll come back to retrace their strong level of support. Good news come out, it'll go up and then come back down. 
uh, right before the earnings. We had a massive run up. And then once we got the numbers, we had a, you know, 20 percent. 15% or whatever it was dropped. So a, a lot of investors are frustrated because a lot of them have just gotten into this stock this year. So if you're new to Palantir, when I say new, I mean, you just come into the stock this year, just have some patience, whatever strategy you have, you have stick to it, rather short term, long term, whatever the case may be, stick to your strategy don't be rat. Don't get rattled, and don't sit up there looking at your portfolio every day. If you look at your portfolio every day, you're going to get emotional, and you're going to go against whatever your strategy originally was. Okay, so take that advice from me. If you take anything out of this, I'm not giving financial advice, but I would set it up in a brokerage that I'm not. And see, I've got like eight or nine brokerages of different things that are going on. I will have it set up in that brokerage and I just won't even look at it. Okay. Even if you have multiple brokerages and you got one main one, I would take Palantir off my watch list. That's, that's just what I would do. If I were, if I were new to this type of thing, or if I knew I got emotional, I would just completely just remove it. Okay. So, that's what I got for you guys. I appreciate you guys. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you found found this video helpful. I appreciate you guys, and I'm out. Peace.